The link in the description is only there to see the source material. Do not under any circumstance go to these people with the intent to be a dick. I don't support witch hunts or lynch mobbing, so don't be either. As for the subjects themselves, my video is for the purposes of criticism and entertainment. Take care and leave it. My content is not here to start drama. Please do not treat it like it is. I can't recall the last time I went looking for material from one commentator and walked away with the previous degree, but that has happened again recently with Paradox Philosopher in his video on Kai Kunai. See, Kai did a video responding to a review by Adzi Gaming on the Crash and Zane Trilogy's version of the first Crash Bandicoot game. Then Paradox Philosopher went in and covered that. And while I do still have my gripes with Paradox's video, some of which I'll go in and cover throughout this commentary, ultimately the video overall is okay and wouldn't have made for interesting material just on its own. Kai's video on the other hand, kinda gives me that extra layer of fun. I'll let you figure out why as we go through the video. Let's begin. Hey guys, Kai Kunai here. Today, I'm going to be showing you something a little different than what my content usually is. Okay, I'm not tensing it in, and there are issues with this clip alone. First off, what am I looking at here? I knew you are trying the pink robot style of commentaries with your avatar on one side and the video you're covering in the center, but... Whenever your avatar moves in the corner, you can clearly see the kunai your avatar is holding is cutting off as it moves. You can fix this with changing your avatar size by going to your video editor's FX and scale that avatar size down and then use the position option to move your avatar to the desired position you want it. I get what you're trying to say, but I feel like the way you explained it is... jank, to put it lightly. First and foremost, Kai Kunai is using Sony Vegas 14. I presume, if we were to assume he was using VideoPad, that your fix would make sense. But as someone who uses just the previous version of Sony Vegas Pro, to tell someone to go into effects to resize your avatar image confuses me when there's a clearly labeled crop and pan event button on literally everything you put into your Vegas timeline. This might seem like a smaller issue, and with all due respect, yeah, it probably is. But if you're going to give a fix like this to your target, the least you could do is make the instructions clearer so someone could follow along without being left confused. Alternatively, you could show off how one would go about editing this way with the instructions showing a clear idea of how to crop, pan, and keep the aspect ratio with the moving image consistent. But, you know, you didn't. Instead, you just opted into critiquing the production with a vague fix to an overall problem. There's also an issue that you're using that particular moving background that looks like it's trying to pull anyone watching this video into the screen and pluck their eyes out. I suggest using a moving background with a pattern that's less distracting to look at. I suppose this one's just subjective at the end of the day because I don't really have an issue with Kai's background myself. It doesn't move that fast, so it doesn't drag our eyes away from what we're supposed to be looking at. With Kai's snappy movement in the corner, our eyes are diverted towards him anyway until the video, which takes up most of the background, appears on the screen to keep our eyes glued onto that. Like, you compare it to Pink Robot, and literally Kai's setup is just basically Pink's, but with the added bonus of he moves his avatar, and the color scheme is not as good as Pink's. But again, that's also subjective. Hey guys, Kai Kunai here. Today, I'm going to be showing you something a little different than what my content usually is. I really liked making this video, so I hope to make more of these types of videos in the future. With that being said, let's get into the video. Hey guys, Kai Kunai here. Today I'm going to be debunking a video made by Adzi Gaming. In case you don't know him, he's a game reviewer and critic who has been gaining a lot of traction lately. However, I disagree with a video of his called Why I Don't Like Crash Bandicoot. If you haven't already, I suggest you check it out for yourself. So, let's see what's so bad about this video. Alright, so Kai, I do have a couple of gripes here myself, if you don't mind. So for starters, the two introductions at the very beginning of the video are kind of redundant at best. I feel like you could have done a better job at organizing the intro into one segment instead of having one where you say that it's not a video style you're used to, and then following that up with the intro giving us the context of the video you're covering. I'll admit, this is a bit nitpicky on my part, so take it or leave it. But when I was watching through this one myself, I had just kind of noticed a way you could have better organized this that maybe you could consider for the future. Hey guys, Kai Kunai here. Today, I'm going to be showing you something a little different than what my content usually is. Today, I'm going to be debunking a video made by Adzi Gaming. In case you don't know him, he's a game reviewer and critic who has been gaining a lot of traction lately. However, I disagree with a video of his called why I don't like Crash Bandicoot. 
If you haven't already, I suggest you check it out for yourself. I really liked making this video, so I hope to make more of these types of videos in the future. So, let's see what's so bad about this video. Just as an example, the second thing I'd wish to point out, and this will be more important later than as of current, but you saying you disagree with the video is going to raise some concerns the more we go in. This video was initially going to be called I was wrong about Crash Bandicoot 1. By that I mean that I have never really understood this game and how people like it. I have tried to play this on multiple occasions, bought on the PlayStation 3 as a PS1 classic and the Insane Trilogy, but I always give up. Now here is one of my main issues with this video. He says himself that he doesn't understand the appeal of the game, but if he didn't understand it, then why is he making this video then? It seems like an unnecessary jab at Crash Bandicoot and the fans of the franchise, such as myself. It literally is not. First and foremost, Adzi himself later in the very video you're covering says that he likes the later installments of the franchise, specifically 2, 3, and to Insanity, with him saying that Crash 3 is one of his favorite games of all time. I love the Crash Bandicoot franchise, especially Crash 3, which is one of my favourite games of all time. At least the franchise can only go up from here. I know Crash 2 and 3 are fantastic games that are worth anyone's time, and let's not forget the greatest Crash game of all time, Twin Sanic. If he himself is a fan of the series, then he obviously sees the appeal of the games in a more general context. However, within this video, he is looking exclusively at the first game from the Insane Trilogy and how he doesn't see the appeal of, specifically, the first game. This took literally six minutes of research actually watching over Adzi's initial video. You don't have an excuse. That said, considering he doesn't understand the appeal of the first game, that doesn't intrinsically imply that he can't do a video talking about the negative experiences he's had with the first Crash Bandicoot game. A negative review doesn't have to understand everything that everyone else likes about a thing because it's going to inherently come from the perspective of an individual who doesn't enjoy it. Unfortunately, we're going to have to come back to this talking point in a bit, but to start on this, making a review off of what everyone else thinks about a game isn't a review. It's just telling us what the popular opinion is, and that on its own would wind up being subjective at the end of the day. If you keep it at purely objective facts, then you're not really doing much more than telling us what the game is about and what you can do in it, and that would be really boring. Most people are not aware of this, but reviewers like myself are constantly walking on eggshells when making reviews. It is very important to keep your reviews as unbiased and objective as possible. If this wasn't the case, literally anyone could make a game review. Hi, I too am a reviewer. What the fuck are you talking about? Reviews are, by nature, subjective. Even those who are professionally trained will in some sense have a subjective stance in their critiques, because good and bad are intrinsically subjective terminologies whose standards will differ from person to person. One person's Citizen Kane could be another's baby geniuses, to put that in perspective. And this is especially true in game reviews, because game reviews will most likely be predicated on one's experience. Since video games are in an interactive medium, no two experiences will be exactly the same, and as such, if one were to say stumble upon a rare game-breaking glitch that may lower their opinion of the game in comparison to someone who did not experience one, Bias is intrinsic, everyone's got one. Don't gatekeep the concept of amateur online reviews because you forgot that. Thank you. This is why it is very necessary to keep your opinions out of the way when making a review. Bro, your whole point here amounted to don't be subjective because I want to control who can and can't be a game reviewer. This really did nothing to debunk how Adzi doesn't like the first Crash Banuka game. I'm playing this game on the Switch Insane trilogy, so I can't really talk about the original. So we'll start with the good because I generally want to keep this channel positive. Hmm, I want to keep this channel positive. Doesn't that contradict exactly what you said 20 seconds ago? You're not exactly making much sense here, but I digress. What? Hi, how is this at all a contradiction? Literally, Edzy starts his video by saying that he wanted to make a video talking about why his distaste for the first Crash Bandicoot game was wrong. This video was initially going to be called I was wrong about Crash Bandicoot 1. By that I mean that I have never really understood this game and how people like it. I have tried to play this on multiple occasions. Bought on the PlayStation 3 as a PS1 classic and the Insane Trilogy, but I always give up. So why I was originally going to call this I was wrong about Crash 1 is because I was really enjoying my time up until a certain point, and then it sank in. I really do not like Crash 1. This means he wanted to be able to make a positive video talking about the good aspects of the game because he was, for a time, enjoying the game that he was playing. Him saying now that he wants to try and stay positive on his channel doesn't contradict how he wanted to make a video talking about the good in Crash Bandicoot. And if it does, 
You, Kai, sure as hell don't show us where this contradiction lies. You just tell us it's there and expect us to believe you at face value. And after your little stunt regarding subjectivity and reviews, I am not about to start believing you at face value. As he said, generally wanted to keep the channel positive, and even dedicated the portion of the video to being positive. Making one particular negative video doesn't mean that his channel isn't generally positive. Eh, this interjection bugs me. For starters, Paradox, this is literally the problem that I have with Kai's point here. You're using later in the video to describe how Adzi spends a portion talking about the good aspects of the game, yet you don't show anything, you just kind of tell us it's there, and while you are right, it is. So we'll start with the good because I generally want to keep this channel positive. Obviously this is Crash Bandicoot, and Crash feels pretty good to control, but not amazing. The first few levels are a really good introduction to the game. These levels introduce the basics of Crash, with the second being slightly harder than the first, having a few pits that you can fall in. And you also get to see the secret room challenges that become a staple in the Crash series. There will be more on these later and how I feel they could have implemented these better in the first game. The first couple of levels introduce something new that will be built upon later. The Great Gate introduced verticality and timing your jumps perfectly. And Hogwild introduces another Crash staple. For me, Temple Runes is one of the best levels in the game. There are plenty of precise jumps that have to be made and the overall aesthetic and feel of the level is wonderful. There's a really good level of challenge and for me personally the game's difficulty spikes at random times then comes back down and then goes back up at random. But I think there are a few things about the fundamental design of Crash 1 that make the difficulty unnecessarily tedious. Had I not went in and watched Adzi's original video, I wouldn't have known this. It helps to not force your audience to do the legwork for you when you can just play a clip fine. That in mind, the interjection itself is a little jank. Like, don't get me wrong, I get the general concept of where you're going with this point, and that one video does not ruin the lot. But not only do you A, not really explain how Adzi typically is positive in his videos, and B, there is no B. I lied to you, your point literally stumbles on lack of elaboration. For me, Temple Ruins is one of the best levels in the game. There are plenty of precise jumps that have to be made, and the overall aesthetic and feel of the level is wonderful. There's a really good level of challenge, and for me personally, the game's difficulty spikes at random times, then comes back down, and then goes back up at random. The difficulty might feel like it's going up and down for you, but for other people, it might just seem like it's going up in a linear fashion. This is a highly subjective comment about the game, and like I said, it devalues the review. Okay, I'll give you that what you said about bearing expenses is true, just what I pointed in one of my last interjections. What? Which point? What interjection? It doesn't help that you effectively mumbled your point to incohesiveness, so I can't figure out what point you're trying to get at. But even with what I could gather, where did you claim one of Kai's points to be true? Your first point was about how experiences with a game will shape one's review, and the other was you directly trying to argue with Kai, saying that Adzi contradicted himself. Literally nowhere have you given Kai the benefit of doubt, and rightfully so because his points thus far have been gatekeeping reviews because my subjectivity. With that in mind, Kai? Oh, you find the difficulty to spike, but other people may not think this way. That's the point? Like, you literally just proved why one's subjective viewpoints and experiences are important for a game review. Adzi found the game to get harder in some places than others, so therefore he's going to explain that he found this to be the case. Trying to debunk this by saying other people's experiences may have been a linear climb is trying to argue a subjective statement with another subjective statement. Why? Worse yet, Adzi isn't even saying this to be a bad thing. This is within his segment talking about good aspects he liked about the first game. You even arguing this to begin with as if a difficulty spike is inherently a bad thing only proves to me that you don't have any self-awareness towards your own subjective bias towards Crash Bandicoot in your commentary trying to tell someone not to be subjective or biased within their game review. Which is just plum unfortunate, really. But how can you be certain other people dealt with this issue in a linear difficult curve? We're not supposed to use our experiences to judge the game then. Also, can I trust the push that we're not supposed to use our experiences to judge a game then? When what you said, when what are we supposed to judge them by? Other people's experiences? Well, at that point, it's not your review. It would be just be you pulling points from someone else's. Which, ironically, would also be built off of subjectivity. See, Kai? Like, this wouldn't be avoidable no matter what. Also, Paradox Buddy, edit your audio better, please. You literally left in an entire outtake and then went back and repeated the exact same point. Like, come on, you've been doing this for what, three years now? For me, Temple Ruins is one of the best levels in the game. 
There are plenty of precise jumps that have to be made, and the overall aesthetic and feel of the level is wonderful. There's a really good level of challenge, and for me personally, the game's difficulty spikes at random times, then comes back down, and then goes back up at random. But I think there are a few things about the fundamental design of Crash 1 that make the difficulty unnecessarily tedious. So let's break it down a bit more. Every jump in the game has to be very precise. Now, there's nothing wrong with this inherently. Plenty of the early good levels have precise jumps and I never felt frustrated playing them. Let's take Generator Room as an example. It's full of tight jumps that have to be pretty perfect. Most of the time you're jumping on a single square platform. Hey, Adzi, I know I'm not here to be commentating on you in particular, but because Kai won't point it out, I will. What happened here? Your footage legit goes dark while you're explaining the problem with the level and it doesn't really help to get your point across with how the level is laid out. Somehow all three of you forget to provide evidence of your claims somewhere, though with you in particular, Adzi, I'd be willing to believe that this was like a rendering error. But even to that, I'd recommend maybe looking over your videos before making them public. Anyway, back to Kai. Another fun level is Heavy Machinery. The jumps don't have to be as accurate, but the level offers a decent bit of challenge so that you can't turn your brain off. And you know what the best thing about these levels are? They're not too hard, but they give you the option to be made a fair bit more challenging if you want to collect all the boxes. This is why most 3D Mario platformers are so great. You can add more challenge by going for the extras. Why is he comparing Crash Bandicoot to Super Mario Bros? He said it himself, they are fundamentally different. No, he didn't. He just said that Mario isn't to the level of difficulty that Crash Bandicoot is. And you know what the best thing about these levels are? They're not too hard, but they give you the option to be made a fair bit more challenging if you want to collect all the boxes. This is why most 3D Mario platformers are so great. You can add more challenge by going for the extras. Now, Mario is nowhere near the level of difficulty that Crash has, but I think it's a good comparison to make. Where does that translate to fundamentally different? On top of that, even had Adzi said that they were, that'd be incorrect because they're both platformers. The fundamentals to both games are literally the same, so this comparison to how the levels are laid out would be a valid comparison regardless of how similarly Adzi sees these games. Uh, no. He's just using Super Mario Bros. as a comparison to Crash Bandicoot. But Kai's issue literally comes from Adzi's comparison supposedly making no sense because they're fundamentally different to him. Just turning around to say he's just comparing the two literally does nothing to negate Kai's counterpoint because he knows this, he just thinks the comparison is bad because of a misconstruction of Adzi's beliefs. There are jumps that borderline feel impossible to me, so this section will mostly focus on the high road. Trying to beat this level is reminiscent of Super Meat Boy or Celeste. You die constantly, but just keep retrying and trying until you get it right. And here's the first issue with this. These games have shorter levels than Crash, and it's usually a matter of seconds before you get to the part that you failed on. Meaning, you can keep trying the part that you fail until you master it. Crash just isn't designed like this. There are parts of the high road that I could do with ease, and it can take a couple of minutes to get back to the part that I had to keep retrying. If you're going to design levels like this, then at least have a really quick restart time so that you're not spending the majority of your time making it back to the part that you failed on. Now, this issue was further highlighted in the level after the high road, and that's the point that I gave up. Now, this is one of his main arguments against Crash Bandicoot. While I do believe that at some point this is an issue, more often than not, it adds to the game by giving it more consequence for your haphazardness. It rewards careful, slow, and deliberate movement while punishing those who simply run through the level without thinking about their actions. Cool. Now, where does this debunk Adzi's point? Are we just going to ignore how Adzi literally says basically the same thing but is applying it to specific levels in Crash Bandicoot where it does become an issue? Like, Adzi doesn't feel like being reset that way is inherently a problem shown by his Celeste and Super Meat Boy examples, but that it's a problem here because the work to get back to his initial spot is otherwise monotonous to do. Regardless of the why a game might do something like this, it doesn't change that Adzi feels the way the first Crash Bandicoot game does it during this level he's talking about is it the proper way to do it? You're basically parroting his ideal back to him, but with the intent to ignore the fact that Adzi is labeling these levels as the bad way of doing things. I'm currently playing Crash 2, and the addition of the slide mechanic really helps with these annoying ice mechanics. I think the next two games in the series get the difficulty perfectly. So now he says that the other games are good? They're basically the same game. They both have the exact same mechanics. Ah, but you see, Adzi's issue comes into the level design of Crash 1 over the mechanics itself. Everything that we have seen up to this point has been Adzi talking about how the levels are unforgiving or adversely really rewarding. He barely touches on the mechanics themselves other than where he talks about an added slide mechanic in Crash 2 that helps deal with icy platforms. 
So regardless of how similar the mechanics are between games, the level design would be the important thing to look at within his review. This in mind, even if we were to go by the ideas of levels being comparable between games, that wouldn't at all change how smaller things can change and be buffed out in later installments that can make later games better to play, but you know. That would make sense, and we can't have that, can we? In my opinion, 3D platformers are at their best when they add extra challenge in the side objectives. In my opinion, hmm. So we finally admit that this is purely opinion-based and holds no merit. Dude, be quiet. This hasn't worked the last two interjections you used it. It's not gonna work now. You know what, let's talk about your Half-Life 2 and Zelda reviews, because I, by this point, was getting curious by how you do reviews, and... I gotta say, if these aren't joke videos, then for someone who wants to say subjectivity doesn't belong in a review, you sure do use a lot of subjective terminology. Half-Life 2 was a first-person action RPG released by Valve. The game is widely critically acclaimed and is one of the most beloved games ever to be made. However, I disagree with this widely held view. The gameplay is hard. Really hard. I mean, I enjoy the later Zelda games, but... I didn't realize just how easy they were. I mean, your first weapon is literally hidden from you in the first room. Let's start with one of my least favorite parts of the game, the graphics. I really didn't like the art style. Everything felt so gray and washed out. Also, the character design felt really flat. As someone who mostly plays Japanese games, I had to put a graphics mod on this game. However, if you're used to Western art styles, then you'll probably be fine. Let's talk about the graphics now. While the graphics are passable, they certainly aren't that great compared to the later games. I really don't like the first person genre. I mean, the first person view is so disorienting. I mean, how do you find out where the enemies are? I definitely like the music from the original Zelda, but can't they at least choose a more original song? All around, I don't understand the appeal of this quote-unquote classic. Politically, it's kind of divisive. Action-wise, you can't see anything, and graphic-wise, I can play through half of the darn thing. All in all, I give this a 9.5 out of 10. With this in mind... These are absolutely joke videos. Yeah, Kai Kunai is kind of a troll channel. A lot of these complaints used in his commentary are used by other people who don't have the excuse of being kind of a blatant troll channel, hence why I actually decided to do this commentary to begin with, but... When you look at his channel, dude, he legit says that the theme from the original Zelda game sounds unoriginal and that he's heard it before. Not to mention how he talks about how much he thinks Half-Life 2 was unplayable because of the graphics, yet still gave it a 9 out of 10. Oh, and his reasons for the graphics being bad? was because they were so dark. Because he put his own little anime graphics plugin on it that visibly makes the game darker. Oh, and let's not mention how much every time he has talked about a female character having some form of dimensionability to it, it's just because they have bigger breasts. I mean, this is a character from the original Dota, and this is a character from Twilight Princess. I mean, beyond just graphics, just look at the character design. I mean, one clearly has much more depth. Personally, my favorite human character was Alice. Although, they definitely made her lack depth in the character design department. With graphics mod, she definitely stands out. Yeah, yeah, this guy's a joke. This guy's a troll. You've been had. I, I, I'm not even on script right now. I'm just kind of like reminding myself that this is really, really funny but then stops being funny when I get into my final thoughts, but we'll come back to that. This whole video was fun to come back to. I've been looking for, for something for a while to cover just so I can finally release something that people actually care about. And this was just, this was, this was it. This was fun. I enjoyed this. Thank you. But with that, it's time to get back to being serious, at least a little bit. Final thoughts. This somewhat goes out to the rest of the group known as the Perfectly Odd Grandmasters, or POG for short, but this is specifically targeted at you, Paradox, because out of everyone, you're the one I've seen perpetuated the most. But guys, what the fuck are you guys doing? And why are you doing shit like this? From what I understand, you guys are just firing at Kai Kunai because he lied about being in your group, and to that I ask, why do you care? Even ignoring how he's a troll, like, let's put all of that aside for now. This is petty. Like, oh no, he said he was a part of a group he visibly wasn't a part of by looking at the group. 
It doesn't change the group's dynamic, how he's still not a part of the group, and how he's not in any projects that might be in the works. This isn't worth dogpiling on him for, even if he wasn't doing it to just antagonize you guys. Furthermore, Paradox, I've seen some of the tweets you've particularly put out about this, and holy crap, you're probably my least favorite person in this situation. Respect your senpais? Grow a pair of cojones? Dude, you claim you're in your late 20s and are getting mad about being called a kindergartner. Calm down. Furthermore, your line of reasoning against kunai is gross, because you're basically talking down to someone because you've been doing commentaries longer than them, basically saying that they can't speak out against us because they don't have the experience. By that line of reasoning, we would only be able to commentate on other commentators who haven't been around as long as us, which, if you knew the community as well as you claim to, you'd know why we'd look down on that mentality. It puts an arbitrary rule on commentators for virtually reasons that are petty at best, and, more to the point, it shows a gross superiority complex that no one wants to be connected to. Cut that shit out. We're a handful of nerds arguing about some dude's opinion about Crash Bandicoot. We're not better than anyone else. In any case, I hope the rest of y'all enjoyed. I certainly did. I was hoping to put out some story in this video after not have released a commentary in, like, a month or two, but I figured if I waited any longer, the video would have more to talk about and I would just get angrier at the situation, so... Bah. I might just release a story video on its own at this rate. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll, I'll see you next time.